So I'm going to do a couple of questions here that have been asked to do from page 91 of Calculus and Vectors. This is number 9. I'm going to do number 9 and number 12 for you. A 75 liter gas tank has a leak. After t hours, the remaining volume V in liters is V of t equals 75 times 1 minus 2 over 24 squared, where t is between 0 and 25, 24. So you can see what happens if we put in 24 here we would have one minus one is zero and the volume would be zero after 24 hours because it's in hours. How quickly is the gas leaking when the tank is 60% full of gas? Okay, so there's a few things we need to figure out before we begin. First of all, how much volume is there when there is 60%? Because obviously this equation doesn't deal with percentages, it's dealing with volume. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out what is 60% of 75. So I'm going to do that first. 75 times 0 0.6 is 45. So we want to know how quickly is the gas leaking when the tank has 45 liters. Now, if we take the derivative, which we know we have to do because that will give us the rate of change, but we need to find at what time what time is this happening? So I need to know when will I have 45 liters of gas? So before I take the derivative, I'm going to use this equation, the volume at time t. I'm going to substitute in 45 for v at t, and I'm going to solve for t. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to say 45 is equal to 75 times 1 minus t over that's a t, t over 24 squared. I'm going to solve that simply by dividing both sides by 75. So I get 45 over 75 is equal to 1 minus t over 24 squared. Four sometimes look like nines, don't they? Okay, so now in order to isolate t, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which means I'm going to have I'm going to move it over here because we need lots of room. So it's going to be plus or minus the square root of, now 45 over 75, these are both divisible by 15. So if I reduce that, that's going to be the square root of 3 over 5. And that's going to be equal to, now by taking the square root of this side, I'm simply removing that square. So I have t over 24. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to bring the t over 24 to this side, t over 24, that makes it positive, and I'm going to bring this over here, which means my plus and minuses are going to be minus pluses, which is the same thing, right? Okay, so I have plus, plus or minus the square root of 3 over 5, so t is going to be 24 times whatever this is. Now you just get out your calculator, you're going to get... Um, Approximately, I'm going to just tell you what I got. So I have 18.59 here, and that gives me t is approximately equal to 24, or not 24. Yeah, where's my eraser? I can't find it. Maybe there's one on here. It doesn't work. Sometimes these erasers are so hard, they just make a mess. So it's plus or minus 42.59 or 5.41. Now, as we said at the beginning of this little story, uh, time had to be between 0 and 24. So that means this solution here is inadmissible. Inadmissible. It's outside the domain. The tank was already empty at 24 hours. So I'm left with 5.41. So that means... That means at 5.41 hours, the tank is 60% full. Okay, so now I'm all set to take the derivative. I'm going to take the derivative of V at T. I'm going to write it out again, just so it's here. V at T equals 75 times one minus t over 24 squared. 
So that means V prime T is going to be equal to, now they said to use a product rule in the question, I didn't write that out. So that means the first times the derivative of the second. So it's going to be 75 times two, that's my exponent, leave everything in the bracket alone. And then you take the derivative of the inside. So it's like the chain rule happening here. We did two, this, reduce this, and the derivative of minus two over 24 is one over 24 and it's negative. Um, plus the second times the derivative of the first would be this times the derivative of 75, which is a zero. So there's really nothing else there to deal with. Okay, so just simplifying that a little bit, um, this is going to give me, I'm gonna multiply this and these two together. So that's going to give me um, minus 150 over 24. So I brought my negative, multiplied these two, left it in the denominator, times one minus t over 24. Now there's no need really to expand this any further because I'm going to plug in 5.41 for my time to find the change in volume. So I'm gonna put in 5.41 here, and I'm gonna plug that in, and you're very nicely going to get one minus uh, 5.41 over 24. And I'll leave you to do that on your calculator, and you're gonna end up with an answer of minus 4.84. Okay, so then a nice concluding statement, therefore the gas is leaking out at, um, now this is where it gets kind of tricky because you're, you're saying it's leaking out, so it's already decreasing. Um, I would still put in the minus four unless you said it's decreasing at and then you don't put it negative, right? You, say, you don't say something is decreasing negatively. So it's leaking out at, which I, I'm trying to decide in my mind right now whether leaking out already implies the negative. Um, I would say it probably does. So it's leaking out at 4.84 liters per hour um, when the tank is 60% full. Okay, so that was a little tricky, uh, tricky in that you needed, first of all, to find the volume at that time. You had to find the time when it would be 45 liters and, um, and then just take the derivative. So first few steps were kind of enough to keep you busy. Okay, the second question is number 12. These are my favorite kind of questions and I'll tell you why in a second here because it's like a puzzle, this one, right? Determine the quadratic function so they gave it in standard form. If the graph passes through 219 and it has a horizontal tangent at minus one and minus eight. Okay, so when you have this kind of information, what you wanna do is you wanna make up all the little equations that you can using these points, first of all. So my first equation, I'm going to use two and 19 and I'm going to plug it in here. So that means f at 2, f at 2 is equal to 19, right? That's what this means. So f at x, I'm going to say, well, that means this is going to be 19 is equal to a times. Now, I always take the time to plug all these things in carefully because sometimes you make little silly mistakes if you don't, like squaring things. So I get 19 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. There's my first equation. Now the second equation I can also make using these point, this point here, so minus one and minus eight. So that means that f at minus one is equal to minus eight. And I'm going to write out the same thing here. So I'm gonna say minus eight is equal to um, a times, and this is where you might make a mistake because you, you, know, you have to square that and that's gonna make it positive, um, plus b times minus one plus c, and that says that minus eight is a minus b plus c. Okay, so now I have two equations, but I have three unknowns. And that's a little problematic in that, how do you solve for three unknowns with only two equations? 
But I was given another little clue. It says it has a horizontal tangent. Not only is this important to get your point, minus one minus eight, but by saying it has a horizontal tangent, that means that therefore f at f prime at minus one is going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to take f prime here. So f prime at x is going to be equal to two a x plus b, driven of constant is zero. And I know that f prime at minus one is equal to zero. So I put my zero here and I plug in minus one for x. That's going to give me minus two a plus b. So that means that b is equal to two a. And now I have a nice little clue to plug back into these two equations to get rid of one of these unknowns, right? I can get rid of these b's in both of these equations. So again, I'm calling this one and this two. And for equation one now, that's going to give me, I'm going to plug in two a where I have a b. So it's going to give me 19 is equal to four a and b is 2a, so plus 2 times 2a plus c. So that's going to give me, that's 4, that's 8a's plus c. And my second equation, I'm going to get, so I had this one here, so I'm going to say minus 8 is equal to a minus 2a, right, minus 2a, so I put in 2a for b and a minus plus c, so minus eight equals minus a plus c. Okay, so I have these two equations here now to work with, this one and this one. I have two equations, two unknowns, and of course you know how to solve that from grade 10. So I'm going to line them up nicely. 19 equals eight a plus c, and minus eight is equal to minus a plus c, and I'm going to eliminate the C's by subtracting. I'm going to put a big minus sign out here so I don't make a mistake. 19 minus minus 8. That's where people make errors. 27 equals 8 minus minus 8 is 9A. And the C's, of course, subtract away. So that means that A is equal to 3. So now that I know that A is 3, B is going to be, B is going to be 2 times 3. That's 6. And C, I can get from either of these equations. So here's my A, here's my B calculation. My C calculation, I'm going to use this one. Minus eight equals minus three plus C. And I bring that over here, so C is equal to minus five. And they asked you for the quadratic function equation, so in the end, you should plug all this back in, right? f at x equals um, 3x squared, and my b was 6 plus 6x minus 5. There you go. There's two tricky little equations. You should know how to do them, and um, I hope that helped you all out. Don't forget to subscribe and um, share, and give me lots of likes and comments. Bye for now.